I'm Jeremy Barnes from AWS Active Web Solutions. Um, we're a bit of a, an interesting named um, company for a, a key Microsoft partner in terms of when we go over to the, uh, the US offices. We're almost booted out the door on the assumption that we're Amazon Web Services, um, but nothing to do with those guys at all. Um, we're, we're essentially um, an enabling partner, um, kind of, uh, all, I guess, almost like a small scale SI. Um, and we're here primarily because for the last close over two years now, we've been heavily involved on the Windows Azure platform. Um, on a number of fronts, we've been uh, working to deliver some platform-based services, um, which we'll touch on briefly as we go through. Um, but we've also been working with other ISVs, uh, independent software vendors and enterprises um, to help them adopt Windows Azure, whether that be through new build applications or whether that be through migrating existing stuff. Um, and we have the UK's first, but I think soon to change, uh, Windows Azure MVP, so the most valuable professional. That isn't me, I'm afraid. Um, so, cloud adoption. Um, this, is, um, this is something that obviously you guys are, are all trying to understand where you fit in, where the best value is, where to start, where, you know, where the long tail of, uh, of cloud is for you. Um, and this is our view on it. There's, um, there's a, a whole bunch of steps where we believe you can essentially ease yourself into the cloud world. Um, the first one is either happening with your blessing or happening with your uh, blissful unawareness, um, which is your organization starting to adopt some form of third party provided software as a service. Um, so we've spoken about that today as, as almost at the end point, but often for many organizations, it's a very simple way into, into a first part of a cloud service. Um, as a salesman and as a bunch of IT professionals, the challenge for you guys is I no longer come to you with my wares. I go to your business team and tell them that software as a service means that you no, you no longer need to go to your IT department and go ask for servers and hardware and connectivity and all of that stuff. You can just buy stuff from me for a handful of dollars per month and if they find out about it, well, who knows? Um, so certainly in the enterprise space, this is happening more and more often and IT, company, IT managers are becoming aware of some form of software as a service application that's been provided and has started to be used normally by a marketing department or someone like that and it starts to kind of proliferate through the organization kind of without your awareness so so it's an interesting challenge and an interesting sort of enabling piece um, as we go through we then start to look at more kind of line of business specific applications um, and we believe there's there's a sensible um, staged approach to this. Now obviously there are a whole bunch of challenges in the public sector about sovereignty of data and all of that piece, but um, for those applications where, where there is a good fit, um, we believe there's, there's a, a sort of phased approach to getting you up and running quite quickly and quite agile, in a quite agile fashion, um, to start delivering these in the cloud, therefore taking advantage of the, of the reduced uh, costs associated with it. Same slide, different, <laughs> different pictures. But there, so there, there are a whole stage, I'll, I'll pop this one through. Um, so the new application development, um, this, this is a great fit for the cloud um, because there's obviously the, the zero capital expenditure piece in delivering a new project. However, the appetite for building out new applications at the moment can be um, low, to say the least. Um, so what we're seeing more often um, is these bottom two starting to happen. So you have an existing application, um, there is a requirement for some new functionality to be delivered on the back of it, and that needs to be built out in the most cost-effective way. Um, as we were talking earlier, with a hybrid-based solution, that can either be a processing element that's taken out into the Windows Azure or a cloud platform, um, or it can be the complete data and processing piece that's delivered out. Um, application migration and maintenance. Um, where you have, and this is, uh, this is I, I think, specific to, um, to, to most organizations, where you have your, um, your legacy architecture. Um, oops, sorry. 
How do I go back? Yeah, stop. <laughs> there we go. One click too many. Should we put that down a sec? So where you have your legacy um, application sitting in your data center, um, your, you have a whole associated set of, uh, of costs and, um, uh, and manpower attached to that. And uh, as Philip was saying a minute ago, they are a, um, a key opportunity to go and look for those that fit within that data profile that you can take across to the Azure platform. Okay, we'll skip past that one in the, uh, in the interests of time. Okay, and when you're building your, uh, your kind of adoption or your migration approach, there's, there are, of course, a whole set of, um, uh, of elements to, to consider. Um, we've been through many of these with, with a whole bunch of migrations and, um, and developments now. And in many cases, um, there are uh, a, whole, a whole bunch of different um, solutions for getting around things, but um, latency, um, and the uh, security piece, obviously, are a couple of things that are um, quite, quite crucial and can take uh, some uh, upfront understanding um, and your location issues as well. Okay, so now I'll talk, talk about a couple of specific developments that we've been through, just so you guys can see that at the pointy end of, of adopting Azure, stuff is actually happening. Um, so the first one is um, essentially just doing a bit more with less. Um, and this is, as I was saying, this is where you can take an existing um, opportunity, an existing application, and actually take that over into the Windows Azure cloud. Um, I think this is, well, you've seen these, these bits on here before, but uh, I think it's really crucial just to, to um, reiterate quite how open the Windows Azure platform is. Um, so Microsoft and openness is, is one of those um, things that people don't necessarily always put together. But actually, on the Windows Azure platform, it, it truly is. It's kind of been built from the ground up to be, sorry, I'm a, we're a partner. We can say stuff like that. For the word oxymoron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're probably right. So, so, so what we found um, is that, the, as I say, the Windows Azure platform has absolutely been built from the ground up as a, as a very open, as a very capable platform for running a whole bunch of broad technologies on. Um, so the .NET stuff, obviously, that, that's kind of bread and butter and very straightforward to build out and deliver. Um, and as a development team, it's the same tooling and it's a, just a different place to go put your application, ultimately. Um, but on things like uh, the Ruby, the PHP, um, and particularly the Java, we've, we've worked through projects where we have Java-based enterprise applications up and running on an Azure cloud um, with zero code change to the core application. So you can take those products, you can applications, and you can move them off that expensive legacy architecture that's sat in those, so all of those whatever it is, nasty Oracle stuff that's costing you a chunk of money sat in the corner, and pick it up and move it up onto the Azure platform in a very structured and, a, and actually a fairly time, uh, or a fairly quick um, activity. So we've, we've worked with um, IS, uh, other software companies and we've had products up and running on the cloud in a couple of weeks. We've worked on kind of bigger enterprise projects where it's obviously taking um, a, a kind of couple of months longer. Um, but because you're not changing your application and your, code, your core code, this, is, this can be a very straightforward exercise and a, and a kind of quick way of actually adopting the cloud. Um, so a little pitch for us. We, we badge this under a kind of common method that we call our Azure Launchpad. Um, if you, as um, you're probably aware, there's the, Azure, uh, the Microsoft Partner Network, um, and you can go on to the Microsoft Partner Network and you can go find a whole bunch of Azure-focused Microsoft partners um, who will have all of their kind of op all of their wares and services on there for you to, uh, to connect with. So another, another kind of um, opportunity for the Azure is to deliver something quickly. So to deliver something quickly without go building all of that hardware without going through that, uh, that traditional project life cycle. Um, something that we've, we've 
just launched is something that's called our AWS Travel Advisor application. Um, so this is uh, coming back to Mark's original um, uh, presentation where he was talking about the three devices that you're, you connect to the cloud with. This is a phone application that consumes data from three sources. Um, so it consumes the FCO's travel advisory information, um, it consumes a whole bunch of Bing functions, um, and it consumes some uh, forum information from a website called gapyear.com. They have about 30,000 or so gap year travelers. Um, and it puts it all together and delivers it out on a single um, application on your phone. So it's currently a Windows Phone 7 application. It'll tell, uh, we'll skip through the, uh, the detail because asking for the, the nearest police station in Libya is perhaps not high on everybody's lists, <laughs> but if, if, if you're there, it's relevant, I guess. Um, but the important bit to this that I, that I wanted to get to, apart from, apart from the, uh, the pretty application, is something called the Windows Azure data market. Um, so the OData initiatives and things like that, da data market has for us been a very simple way and for the FCO to push out their data set from a single source, so it, it gets delivered from their website. We've written um, a, a little application that lives out in Windows Azure, sucks in that data, um, posts it up onto the Windows Azure data market um, and enables us, but also enables anyone else that wanted to go and subscribe to that set data set to go build a set of applications that uses it. So the advantages for the FCO here are that they only need to worry about publishing their data in that one place. The other advantage is they can, through the data market, set a whole bunch of kind of structure and standards around how that data can be used. So they don't have to worry about each individual application and how it's, how it's consuming their data. They set that all out through the data market. Um, and I think this is obviously going to be a growing source of, um, or, or grow a point for, uh, for a number of organizations to, to look to deliver out data that they need to push out. So in the interest of time, is that, was that just a couple of minutes I had left? Okay, so, so what's this achieved? Um, it's, it's a new and unique service. So it's a simple way for the FCO to push that information out and do it in a very cost-effective way. There was no hardware involved in this. There was no significant project costs. And it was a two-week project. Um, so this was a quick, rapid, simple, quick win. And the other important piece here is it's a very reliable service, the Windows Azure platform. Um, so we have, which we'll just touch on here, but just, just lastly, um, we have a safety of life at sea system that we built out some time ago now for the, for the RNLI. Um, this is um, a satellite-based system where a fisherman goes out on his boat on his own, falls over the back of his boat, and an alert sent and triggered. Um, so this has been running in Azure for over two years now with 100% uptime and 100% availability. Um, it connects through to Coast Guard applications. It connects through to the RNLA base applications, but it also connects out now to a whole range of other service providers in this space. So um, in the US, we're seeing a lot of interest, um, which is now under the, uh, the, 